everyone. Welcome to Riverbank Church Online. My name is Rachel, and I am thrilled that you are joining us here. I am so excited. If this is your first time joining us, we just want to say a special welcome, and we're so glad that you are here. This week, I have been reading this verse, and you may have heard it because it's a, it's a pretty familiar verse, and it's found in Psalm, and it says, Be still and know that I am God. And for so long, I thought that that was really talking about me uh, being still with my body and kind of calming myself and being in his presence and resting. And this week, I felt like God was teaching me something more than that. I felt like he was saying, actually, Rachel, it is that. You do need to be still, but also you need to be still in your heart and in your mind. You need to calm those worries and those fears and those anxieties that you're feeling. And the way to be still is to know that I am God and that I am in control and that I am for you and I'm fighting your battles. And one of my favorite things to do when I need that reminder is to worship. Right now, we're gonna enter into a time where we spend some time slowing down and worshiping together. We've got a couple of songs and they talk about the fact that God is control, in, in control. And there's a couple of lines I love. We're basically gonna be asking God to do what only he can do, to move mountains that we can't move, only he can move those mountains. And to deal with the things that we feel are impossible and, and teach us that anything is possible with him. And so I'm gonna pray. And as we worship, I'm just gonna invite you to think, what is that thing in my life that I need to just be still and quiet and trust that God is in control? God, I just thank you for this opportunity in our week just to be still and calm. I thank you that you invite us to your presence. And I pray for more and more and more of you. I pray that you would just flood this place and that you would prepare our hearts and that you would just be with us. Help us just to rest in you tonight. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I think the stone's getting ready to roll. I feel a faith that is starting to rise.
possible, it's possible for you You can make the chains come loose You can tell the mountains to move Even the impossible, it's possible for you Even the impossible, it's possible for you
Amen, church. I just, I think we should take a second right now and celebrate the fact that we can claim victory in Jesus' name, no matter what we're going through. That's so much to be thankful for. That's right. We're going we're gonna to actually continue our worship with our giving. And I love the idea that God gives us the opportunity to worship him through our giving and being faithful with everything he's given us. But if I can be honest, <laughs> there were many times in life when this moment came and I just felt overwhelmed. I wanted to be generous and I wanted to give, but I had not aligned my money quite the right way. And I, I couldn't. I just wasn't making those choices um, that would allow me to give and to be faithful. And one of the best things that my husband and I have ever done is to take a class called Financial Peace University. And if you haven't heard of it, it's this awesome class all about prioritizing how God sees money and encouraging you to get a budget. <laughs> we had to learn to have a budget meeting and get on the same page with how we spent our money, which that in itself was a huge victory. Um, but we learned a lot in this class. Um, we spent $100 to take that class. And then we spent about $100 more to get this app where we could track our spending and make sure that we were staying on track. And it was a great investment. And I'm so thankful that we did it. Um, but tonight, I have something super exciting to share with you, and that is that we want to offer all of that to you for free. We want you to know that this year has been pretty crazy. Um, and there might even be, there's always a stress with money, but there might be new stressors in this season of COVID and maybe job loss or decreased hours. And maybe your heart is to be faithful and you're giving, but you just can't. And so we have partnered with Ramsey Plus and you can go onto our website or onto the app and you can find out everything you need to know um, about these resources and these tools and you can use them to start getting some victory in your finances and finding some freedom. Even cooler than that is that you can share it with basically everyone you know. <laughs> this can be a gift that you can give to people to say, hey, this has been a hard year and here's some tools that you can use. So we're so excited about that and we pray that you'll just use those to find some freedom. This week, you guys, two people said yes to Jesus. Two people, right? And that's amazing. It's, it's why we do this. It's so cool to be a part of a church where people's lives are changing in Jesus' name. And so if you want to give to that, if you want to be a part of that rescue mission, there are lots of ways you can give here. You can go to our website. You can go to the app. And there's some um, giving boxes right here in the lobby. And you can also text to give. So I encourage you to just pray about what God is asking you to do. I'm going to pray for the tithes and offerings that we're going to receive, and then we're going to jump into today's message. God, I am thankful for you, thankful for this moment, and I'm thankful for the freedom that you give us in all areas of our lives if we'll just trust you with them. And I pray that the gifts and the tithes that are coming in, God, that you'll just multiply them in ways that don't make sense, <laughs> that people will find freedom in you um, and that lives will be changed. And I'm uh, praying right now that as we hear from Pastor Chris, that our hearts will be ready and we'll be ready to learn um, and to hear what he has to share, what you have put on his heart. Just be with him as he shares with us now. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey, I want to look uh, right into the camera and just welcome everybody in your living room online or wherever you might be. And our Claremont family in the, in the theater, thank you. I'm hanging out with our White River Junction location. You want to give it up for our friends online in Claremont? Yeah. So we're in this series, it's called Refocus, and each and every year, what we like to do is kind of capture a theme that we can stick with, and um, one of the things we like to do is give everybody a, a refocus or a, a themed band, a wristband, so uh, at whatever location you're at, make sure you grab one of those if you haven't received one, but if you're watching online, you're like, man, I want one of those bands, how do I get one? Let our hosts know, and we might be able to get one of those to you, just let them know that, but this refocus focus series is important because what it does is it's helping us in a way uh, refocus for the year and get kind of the priorities aligned. And for the past couple weeks, we've been talking about very specific areas that we need to target. And uh, my hope is that if you haven't been here with us or watched online, that you would do so catch up. You can go to our YouTube channel or you can go to the Riverbank Church website and you can catch up with the series. But today we're going to continue the conversation. And something that I've been wanting to do is uh, include a really a person who's important in my life in this conversation. And, but before we kind of jump into that part of the message, I want to read something to you. Um, it's in Matthew chapter 16. Now, if you haven't downloaded the Riverbank Church app yet, I'd encourage you to do that because all of that we're going to talk about today is right on the app and the scripture is right in the app. But I want to read it to you from my Bible. And this is really the foundation of today's message and conversation. Matthew chapter 16, a little context. Jesus is with his disciples, and he's, um, he's really, they've gotten to know him more and more and more. In verse 24, it says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it, Jesus says. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Verse 26 is the key. He says this, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your soul? And the key word is soul. And we're going to talk about the soul, the innermost part of, of who we are. He goes on, he says, is anything worth more than your soul? Jesus poses that question. Is anything worth more than your soul? And so I, I want to continue on with this conversation. So if you could do me a favor and just tune in to this conversation I have with a good friend of mine. Brian Neal, how are you doing, my friend? Man, I am doing awesome. Thanks for having me here uh, today. It's an honor to have you uh, joining us today. Now, I have, I'll just share with the church, I have a, uh, our relationship is that we have a counseling relationship. Over the past almost two years, uh, we've gotten together once a month, thereabouts, and um, gotten to know each other. You've helped me navigate through a lot of things. And um, what a blessing it's been to help me have a healthier internal uh, over the past couple of years. And, um, you know, our relationship was initiated out of, you know, I needed someone to be able to help me heal internally and, and deal with some mm -hmm. of the things. And out of that, we've developed a friendship. Um, and it's it's one of those things that's like become like a, a constant, consistent, once a month thing. But I want people to know you a little bit. Why don't you share a little bit, of our, our church, a little bit yeah. about you? Yeah, well, first of all, Chris, I got to tell you, this time that we've had together, I get as much out of this uh, when I meet with you as I'm sure you get, um, you know, from the time. So first of all, that's a privilege uh, and I get that opportunity. And, and it all started, um, you know, in terms of my counseling, you know, 15 years ago, I can't believe it's been that long. Um, I was working in aviation, which is so far different than counseling. And I really heard the Lord call me uh, and very specifically and saying he wanted me to go into to become a counselor uh, full time. And I said, wow, God, what's that look like? And um, what that looked like was I quit my six figure salary. I sold my house and I packed up my wife and my four kids. And, and we went to Florida to go to grad school, the same school that, that you attended as well, Palm yeah. Atlantic University. Um, and yeah, that's what we did. And it was an adventure. Uh, I mean, it's still an adventure, right? And um, so it's been exciting. Uh, we did, I uh, jumped right into grad school. Uh, after grad school, jumped right into a private practice. Um, 
And, and then I spent a little time in the church as well. Uh, so I attended a, a fairly large church down in South Florida, and they asked me to come on board and help them with discipleship and counseling and care. Um, and it was awesome. Um, but then I really felt God calling me back into my private practice to be able to just help others outside the church and in the church. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, I've got uh, four kids, four biological, and then I have two adopted six-year-old uh, boys, which is... Which <laughs> Makes is, your yeah, life interesting. People, yeah. yeah, people laugh and go, that's crazy. And, uh, and it is, it is crazy. And uh, But what an adventure. My wife of 29 years has been by my side every step of the way. I couldn't have made that, that, um, that step without her. Um, and so now we are just really blessed to, um, we just moved from Florida. So we're in Florida for 15 years and, uh, I'm sure you and others know what that's like in the winter. It's, it's awesome. And, uh, we moved back to Delaware. Um, yeah, you guys moved, where we moved last, from. was it last year, right? Yeah. Right yeah. in the midst of the pandemic, oh, uh, gosh. March 23rd. <laughs> I still remember we were on the road We're like, this thing is right at its peak. We're like, zipping in and out of like rest stops with masks and gloves and everything. And yeah, again, just yet another chapter in the adventure. So we moved back to Delaware um, to be with family and to help with family. And um, it's, it's been great. Mm. And so I started my practice here again, but uh, it's just a privilege to be able to do what I get to do. Wow. Well, today what I want to do is talk about, so we're in this series, it's called Refocus and encouraging people yeah. to kind of refocus on the things that matter the most. And I couldn't think mm -hmm. of a better person to talk about this next idea is the soul and caring for the internal, uh, the person. Yeah. Like, you know, I think what we have in the world we live in, everybody like wants to have a really good external, looks really good, mm -hmm. but internally yeah. there's some brokenness. There's a scripture in Matthew 16, you know it. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul, is anything worth more than your soul? Like that yeah, word yeah. soul, okay. right? Mysterious as it is. Yeah. And I think we, yeah. we talked a little bit about this. Like that isn't, this isn't talking about eternity. That I think a lot of times we read this, it's like talking, like this is, no, this, what is this talking about? Yeah. This, yeah, is, this talk is talking about, yeah. I mean, it's a body, mind and will. Yeah, right? it is all of those things. Yeah, it's the con it's it's a conditional type thing. It's like what's going on inside, not just it's not just. No, we're concerned about eternity, and we'll talk about that later. But I think sometimes yeah. we jump to that and forget that right now we have something going on that we need to care for internally. That God has given us, and that whole idea of soul. Um, Jesus asks, "Is there anything worth more than your soul? You and me, yeah. we have a soul. Uh, have you watched the Disney movie Soul yet?" I have not. Oh, you got to watch that with your kids. They will love it. I know many of our church people, it's on Disney Plus. That's kind of more about like the afterlife soul. And by the way, it's theologically a mess, but has Disney ever been theologically accurate? No. So don't go into it like no. with a, <laughs> this, right. you know, it's just a movie. But it, it really, the, I want to define the soul. Let's go back to what you said. This is, um, work, let's work on the outside in. So the body. So the body, mm -hmm. our, our face. The body language, actions, our kingdom, I've heard uh, de described it. Let's talk about that a little bit. That's kind of the easiest part. Um, like, yeah. we can put on a facade real easy. I'm sure you see it all the time. Um, like, oh, the, yeah. So the, you got the body, um, and then you go internal to what? We've got the yeah, mind. The mind. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, boy, you know, the mind is, it's a cornerstone, isn't it? I mean, it's what we use every day. Yeah. Um, you know, our thoughts, our feelings, you know, our values, our conscience, you know, all this stuff is, I mean, very few of us can go a day without yeah. having a deep thought. Yeah. Right. And especially now, right. With everything that's going on and, you know, I mean, my hope is that in 2021, we're, we'll be able to find a better balance of all this, right. Yeah. And including our thoughts in, yeah. which ultimately influences our behavior, right. Yeah. And our actions. Yeah. yeah. And it seems to me like people are, it's easier to take care of your body, the external, than go to that next layer, the, the thinking. And I think yeah. we have to understand that the thought life, go, and then there's the will. So you're kind of going out from the body, the mind, the will, and the will is your intentions and the ability to make decisions. Speak to that for a second. 
Yeah, that the will, and, and we, we don't talk, I don't think enough about it, but at the end of the day, our will is really our choice. Mm. It's, an, it's about the decisions that we make. We willingly, right, move forward. If you think about it, we make choices every day. Yeah. You know, we, we, we choose to, uh, my gosh, we choose to brush our teeth every day. Why? Because otherwise we're going to have a lot of problems three months from now. We choose, I mean, the greatest choice that we get to make is that we choose to follow Christ. Hmm. So everything that we do is kind of based on this choice thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I have, I use this formula a lot, you know, it's um, kind of like choice plus commitment equals change. Hmm. And I feel like if we can get, if we can start to really work, like you said, from the inside out and start to look at hmm. the choices we make and the commitment to those choices, I think as we start to change uh, our, from the inside out and we start to change and, and create a healthy soul, that the things that trouble us on the outside um, are going to start to to melt away because yeah. we we will have what's really important to God, mm. and that's exactly what the soul is. It's the yeah. body, which again we easily we yeah. you know New Year's oh let's get a you know we don't we don't get gym memberships right now I don't think but let's <laughs> add to our home gym let's get physically fit that's right. easy but then you get to the mind and then you get to the will the decision making. And then what that yeah. this is what this is the best part of our conversation is kind of brings it all together. That's the soul. All of those things integrated yeah. into a single whole life make the soul. And that's what I want to I really want to delve into today. Um, the seed of our feelings, our desires, our affections, our aversions. That is where our life is. When Jesus says in Matthew, when he says, What profits a man? What benefit is it of man if he has all this going on? But you've lost your soul, the depths, the interior of yourself. Um, yeah. And it's that harmony, that connection, and that integration, the deepest part of me. And so yeah. let's talk about that uh, today and, and even ask that question, like, how, how's your soul? And, um, yeah. you know, Jesus says, to lose my soul means I no longer have a healthy center. And that mm. what organizes and guides my life. And I bet people watching right now here, they're online or one of our locations, there's people that are saying, yeah. man, I don't have a soul. I feel like it's gone. There's something, there's just like, how can we move in the direction of fixing that? Um, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the first part for me is, is really looking at those three pieces and, yeah. and, and, do we have balance first mm. of all right like like you said earlier you know we we jump to the to the the physical the body and we're going to we're going to do all this with our you know go to the gym or working out which is super super important but if we forget um that that part about the mind and how we're feeling if we mm. discount that if we if we shut it down which so many so many people do um then we're really going to get out of balance and and then the soul is just not going to be healthy it's mm, good. Dallas Willard, um, many, you know, he's kind of one of those theologians. He's since gone to heaven. Says this: uh, when you have an unhealthy soul, it's like a car without a steering wheel. And I think mm. there's probably people that that really hits home. Like you just feel like you're 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 directionless. So how yeah. is your soul? That's the question. We'll start with some questions, and we'll walk through these together, Brian. Uh, some questions to ask yourself will help. So I'll ask them, and I'm gonna have you kind of unpack it. So. The That's question great. that you can ask yourself, so wherever you are online, you're at one of our locations, how are you and God? If you really want to get to the, the heart of this, like how's your soul? Well, how are you and God? Are you responding to the truth of God's word in a healthy manner? So let's, let's talk to that. How, how can we respond to God's word and in our relationship with God in a healthy manner? Yeah, I mean, I think first of all, we have to be in the word. And that, and that kind of sounds almost cliche. Now it does. You know, are you in the word? And it's like, what's that mean? Are we just having a conversation? Um, you know, I started reading a book called two chairs. I don't know if you've read that book, mm -hmm. um, but it's really, it's, it's, it's about who's in the other chair mm -hmm. and it's God's in the other chair and you wake up each day and what type of conversations and questions are you asking God? You know, are we, are we inviting him into our day? Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's one thing to you know, grab a, a devotional and kind of cruise through that thing and or, or not at all. And and another to go, wow, God, I, I really I just want to have a conversation with you. I, I really want to ask you, you know, what I can do. And, uh, and I want to ask you to help me today. And I think so. I think just starting and having a regular conversation 
you know, something that starts to begin to feel more natural is, is to me the, the first part of, of bringing balance mm. to the soul. Yeah. And, and part of that, you've mentioned this before, is, um, is the confession side, the repentance, p- personal inventory. Um, yeah. You know, I bet in our time together, you would probably be able to r- pick up real quick whether I've been having good time with God, right? Yeah. You yeah. would. And I yeah. think if we're not having a good time with God, we're not like, if I'm not good with God and I'm not responding to the word of God in a healthy manner, I'm not going to be a healthy person. And you'd be able to tell real fast as, as my counseling, you know, in our counseling relationship. Yeah. Um, next week, we're going to talk about um, garbage in, garbage out. You've heard, you know, that whole, okay. um, yeah. yeah, we're going to talk yeah. about it. Right. So I'll, I'll pick up on, hey, here's a scripture I want to read to you real quick. Uh, Hebrews 6.19. As a matter of fact, this is super fresh. I caught this just in the last 24 hours, and I, I wanted to get okay. kind of a little perspective from you. Hebrews 6.19 says, we have this hope as an anchor for our soul. I think mm-hmm. that fits perfectly what you're talking about, like that relationship, that that conversational piece, prayer in the Word of God, uh, confession, yeah. repentance. Like, Talk about that that hope and what, how is that an anchor for our soul? Yeah. Well, I think again, if, if we are hopeless, mm. um, then we are probably not having that, those conversations with God. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody once said, you know, um, yeah, I'm not hearing from God. You know, I, I do not hear from God. And the first question I ask them when they come in to, you know, we're sitting down and we're getting to, to know what the story is and, and they're like, I just, I'm not hearing from God. I feel like he's not present. And I, I asked them kind of, you know, straightforward. I said, are you talking to God? Hmm. And they go, well, I pray every day. And I say, no, I mean, are you talking to God? Are you, are you having those conversations? Are you asking him questions? Are you in, in reading uh, the word, right? Hmm. So let me talk about, you know, that is his, you know, that's his way of communicating to us. It isn't always his audible voice, right? It hmm. is his word. And and if we're not in there and doing that, you're right. Earlier you talked about, well, you could probably tell if you were in, you know, having that strong walk or not. If if your spirit is unsettled and you're you're kind of on edge, and I'd be like, I mean, it's usually the first question I ask, but like, yeah, how's your, how's your walk with God? How's your conversations with mm-hmm. God going? And, you know, more time than not, people are like, ah, oh, yeah, this week's been a busy week. Mm-hmm. And, and there, there we get back to the balance that we'll talk about more later in our conversation. But, you know, where's the balance? If we're, if we're so far out of balance with what, where we are in the world and what we're doing, um, then our soul mm-hmm. is going to, is going to suffer. It's like we can allow all the distractions of the world to take away from that. And that's how we have an unhealthy yeah. soul. We have that. We were talking about like uh, driving a car without the, the steering wheel. That's where it, yeah. it really starts there, doesn't it? The relationship yeah. with yeah. God. You know, uh, something you mentioned before in a conversation is you asked like, when's the last time you took an inventor- inventory of your mind? your will and your body, these three things that make up the soul. When, when have you like thought through and like kind of unpack that for a second? Because I think for us and, you know, in our church community, the people who are in that space of like, like, I want to take inventory. Well, how do I do that? Like, what are you talking about when you say, Hey, take an inventory, look at your own life. Uh, unpack that for a second. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, for me, and, and I know I've done it personally and, and I've always you know, told people to, to try this. And, and for me, taking an inventory is really looking at your life and, and you can do this pretty easily. If, if you just take a piece of paper and you write down all the things that you do every day. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, you know, it's, I wake up, I, 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 you know, I have my devotion, I, you know, I get ready for work I go to where I just write all the things down that I do every day. And then you look at how much time do I spend? on each one of those daily tasks. Um, but see, here's a kicker. The, the next thing that you want to look at is how much time do I spend thinking about mm. these topics? Because it, it starts to paint a picture of what your story and what your life is like. And it, it doesn't take much to look at it and go, wow, you know, I am spending so much time and effort on this when I'm, I'm missing out on, on this piece mm. over here. And, and so start to align those things and look at it from, from the mind and the body and your will. And, your, and, and you'll start to see where as you bring your life into balance and you start to bring these pieces together, that your soul is going gonna, is gonna, to um, 
you know, improve, it's going to grow stronger, and, and you're going to be what they, you know, there's the old, um, you know, hymn, you know, well with your soul. Yeah, right? that's a good one right yeah. there. It is well. It is well with my soul. That's good. So maybe our friends, you know, church, Riverbank Church right now, you're in Claremont, White River, you're watching online. Maybe you need to uh, lean into that idea of taking inventory of your soul. So the second question I want to kind of uh, navigate towards is we ask this, this question, how's your soul? Second one is, well, how has the past of your life and, this is key, and this season affected yeah. you internally? Because <clears throat> a lot of times we... We just move. I'm one of those guys, Brian, that if something happens, I just try to move on from it. And sometimes mm-hmm. we need to lean into it and we need to ask, like, how has this affected me? And especially in the season, you know, how, how are the things of 2020 leaning into 2021? And it's not starting out like we all hoped it would, right? Um, so yeah. unpack that. Like, um, give us some commentary on that question. Yeah, you know, um, I'm definitely a, a believer. You know, our experiences that we have, and, and we all have many, uh, good and bad, really shape the beliefs that we carry forward in life. Mm. You know, if you think about, you know, if, if your mom or your dad, you know, basically brought you up a certain way, you will take away and you will continue to act on beliefs that, that were born from that. Mm. And uh, sometimes negative experiences. I mean, I think about this year and all of the things that have gone on you know, um, my gosh, you know, the statistics are, are staggering uh, and it it's continues and I continue to see it uh, in, in the people that I see and the people around us. But, you know, a good example is young adults right now. You know, it's like a 40. I read somewhere last week, you know, 44 percent increase in depression and anxiety among, you know, uh, young adults ages 18 to 29 hmm. um, during this past year. You know, um, there's a, another statistic that, that would say that um, young adults are 85 percent of young adults are unhappy. Hmm. And, and that has so much to do with with our soul. You know, I look at, at teens, um, you know, I meet with with teens and couples and families and young adults and teenagers are really looking for their identity. It's struggling. Hmm. And and even more now uh, than before, because this year, uh, and Chris, I know you've seen it and I've seen it. It's been a year of isolation, you know, and, and early on in the pandemic, um, we kind of were together, uh, almost like when you have a, a big snowstorm. I know you guys in, oh, in yeah. Vermont, right? <laughs> the big, you know, the uh, North, I'm, I'm from Maine originally, right? So I can say this, that the Nor'easter comes in, you know, and it jumps so much snow. And, but you all, you all get together, you're out plowing, you're, you're working together. And it's kind of, it's hard, but it's kind of exciting. It's, it's you're together as a family. Well, in the pandemic, that's how it was early on. But now we are so far into this thing, Chris, that, that people are just tired, yeah. they're just really tired. Um, you know, you've got people that have lost their jobs. And so now more than ever is a time to say, wow, you know, what can we be grateful for? Hmm. What can we, you know, how do we start to turn this around? And because we don't want these experiences to form beliefs that we carry on into the future, um, we want to try to look at 2021 as a time to look at the mm. past, acknowledge what it was, but know that God is with us moving forward. So I just think that um, it's, it's affected so many people um, across all the different populations. Mm. How, our- how important do you think it is for people, just anybody, who to speak those things, to be able to say, hey, I am anxious, I am really yeah. overwhelmed, or I have been watching too much CNN, you know what I'm saying? Like how, yeah, right, how right, important right. is that to speak it and, and the necessity of yeah. having people to speak that too? Yeah. Oh, I think it's extremely important, right? Yeah. It's um, if we don't speak it, we tend to let it settle mm. in our own minds and, and it's, it becomes this ongoing movie that keeps playing mm. over and over and over again. You know, I think, uh, I think even for myself, you know, I've committed in 2021 is an area that I want to bring more balance and more growth and, and um, to my, my, my life and my soul. And so for that reason, I'm going to be getting with my own counselor, right? It's, yeah. good, it's a solid, trusted, uh, you know, friend from, from years. And I'm going to be getting with him because I do think it's important. I mean, we carry a lot, yeah, yeah. right? Um, I mean, I'll just speak for myself, you know, and full disclosure. I mean, I've, I've moved in the middle of a pandemic, right? 
I, I, I quit a job and started another practice. I came here. I had I had no way of knowing if I was even going to be able to start my practice here in Delaware. Um, I have, you know, six kids. I'm 59 years old and I have two six-year-old boys, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, I see on average. Speak it, Brian. Speak it. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, man, right? I, I, I want to make sure that I am bringing balance and I am, you know, mm. bringing help to my soul. That's good. And so I am reaching out, and I and I and I just would advocate and, and you know say that everybody should find somebody, right, that you can trust, mm. right, you know, and and I know that you know, one of the things we had talked about in the past was you know this influence of people uh, on our experiences, right, and mm-hmm. the, the influences of people. You know, who do you have? Yeah. That's that's in your life that you can speak to because you know, um, yeah, our pastor down in Florida once said, you know, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Yeah, yeah, right. And and so the people that we have around us, we want to be able to speak into that. Uh, you want to be able to speak into um, people like a counselor. You know, here here's one thing that I know that I've heard a lot, and I firmly believe that it's okay not to be okay. Mm. And I, and I think in 2020 and now into 2021, if you're feeling like I'm not okay, guess what? It's okay mm. not to be okay. And it's okay to reach out to somebody. And now more than ever is, is, is the best time to do that. Yeah. yeah that's that uh, third question is who's speaking into and listening to your life consistently, good and bad. And I love that you brought up the whole idea that show me your friends and I'll show you your future. That's so important. I think especially now is a great time. If you have people in your life that are speaking toxic words into your life or influencing you in a toxic way that are hurting you, that continue maybe stepping back into your past and those people are still influencing your life that have hurt you, maybe 2021, we're talking about refocus is an opportunity to refocus on the right people in your life to speak into your life. And I love that you said that even you are looking for the right people to speak into your life because people help form us, right? In every different way. Uh, that's what they help form us. So um, the, the last question I want to ask and this whole idea of like, how's your soul? And I think what we've done is we ask these questions, help, hoping people ask them for themselves to say, hey, I need to get healthier. I want to have a healthier internal. Uh, the last one is what was the greatest, what has the greatest value in your life? Um, and I think that's an open question because I think in our in our culture yeah. we have a lot of things right pulling for our attention. Right. And so let's let's talk to that for a second. Yeah. Again, I think it gets back to that balance. You know, how do you how do you find a balance in your life and what's bringing value? Um, I mean, I can think of of the tangible things and some of the more intangible. An example of the tangible is like you know, um, my gosh, I was reading this again, a staggering uh, number, but I was reading that. If you look at how much time that you're spending on your screen, like on your phone, mm. um, they added it all up. And on average, the person, the average person would be spending close to 74 days Gosh. out of 365. Like on, like if you add up all the hours, like that's staggering, right? It's hard to wrap and, your head around. Yeah. It's disturbing. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so I think that's a good example of and, I, and I'm not like, you know, saying, oh, don't watch, you know, don't get on social media or whatever. But I do think there's a balance. Mm. You know, I think if you start to ask yourself. Um, so now let's shift into that type of, of of activity and how it affects you emotionally. If you find yourself agitated and mm. frustrated and irritated, then, wow, what value are you finding in what you're doing? And I think that's I think that's what we have to look at. And that's how you bring you know, um, that's how you become, you know, soul care or a healthy soul is, is what are you pouring into mm. your mind? What are you, what are you doing with your body and what are you pouring into your mind? And again, so now we look at will and are you making the choices mm. that really bring true, you know, soul care? Yeah. You going back to the inventory thing. Um, I think even here you can make a list of all those yeah. daily things, activities, how much time it would, it, I think it would be shocking. And it's funny. Uh, I, we've done that recently going into the new year and said, you know, what, we're going to stop doing these things and we're going to start doing these things, these other things that are more, that bring more value to the internal 
uh, not just for me individually, but it's even making these decisions collectively, Penny and I as, a, as kind of leading our family with our children, because uh, it's really easy. I think the yeah. screen is the easiest place for us to go. It's so easy. Yeah. And that can have such a detrimental effect on our soul. Um, yeah. You know, I think we have to identify what are we holding closest to our heart and make sure that the the that we have the right things that we're put like you just said it like putting the right things in um yeah good stuff man good stuff yeah. is there anything else that uh, maybe you want to speak to our church in regards to this idea of taking care of your soul or uh, any any kind of fi- parting words of advice or encouragement no i, I think uh, i think the parting words of advice would be um don't go another day hmm. um feeling you know, um, where you're not okay. Don't go another day where some of these emotions, I mean, especially um, in 2020 and even as we started off, you know, 2021, you know, somebody was once said that, you know, if there's, and this was like a proverb, but if there's um, a problem and there's no solution, then there's no value in getting angry about the problem. Hmm. If there's a, a problem and there is a solution, but there's still no value in getting angry about the problem, you know? And, and I would say that, you know, God doesn't want us to live in this place where we have a lot of these negative emotions. Mm. So if you find your place, you find yourself in this place where you are really feeling that way, that's this is a great opportunity uh, to reach out to people. Um, whether the, I know you've got some resources that you can give people, but my gosh, I think of even um, in the area of um, addictions, you know, you take the time. Uh, I know it's it's a hard first step sometimes, but go ahead and take that that first step in in getting in and, and joining um, whether that's a uh, recovery group. You know, if it's your marriage, you know, take that first step in reaching out to a to a either you know a church counselor, or a Christian counselor. Yeah. You know, if if it's work, take that first step in 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 getting uh, right with your soul. Mm, that's good. I love that Jesus was so clear when he said. Uh, what good is it if you gain the whole world, but you lose yeah. your soul? Uh, yeah. Is anything worth more than your soul? Yeah. Who we are internally. Hey, Brian, thanks so much. Yeah. It was so good hanging out with you, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's great to be here. Yeah. God bless yeah. you. We'll get. We'll do it again. Okay. We'll do it again. Uh, awesome. All right. God bless right. you, my friend. You know, the soul, the seat of who we are, uh, my hope and prayer is that maybe today uh, you're watching online, you're in Claremont, White River, wherever you are, uh, maybe there's something stirring for you to say, you know, I want to be, I want 2021 to be the healthiest year for me. And, and a, a few things that I think are important. There's some resources. If you have the app on there, there's a book I highly recommend. It's called Soul Keeping. You read this, you'll find some of the things we talked about in this message about the soul. And I encourage you to read that really good resource. Also on the app is an area, uh, if you're thinking like, I need counseling, uh, I would love to have a counselor like you do, Chris. Well, I promise you there's available counseling out there. And on the app, there's a link for something called Faithful Counseling. It's an it's a online resource that helps match you with a Christian counselor. And of course, it's all telehealth. So it's, it's, that's one of the blessings of the COVID season is that we've all gotten pretty uh, savvy uh, technically, right? And so uh, Faithful Counseling is a great resource. Also, Deeper Walk International, a great resource for you. Uh, webinars, blogs, helping you kind of dig in to the depths of you. And of course, here at Riverbank, uh, if you're not plugged into a table group, that's a great place for you to get face-to-face. It was funny, uh, before uh, today, I was talking with a friend of mine, he was sharing how table groups have just become so powerful, hearing stories and, and sharing stories and being kind of with people. Well, you need to get plugged into a table group and, of course, celebrate recovery. Can I just tell you an amazing resource that we have available here at Riverbank Church, some amazing people that are there really working on some of the depths of who they are. And I'd encourage you to step into these opportunities. We're not going to get better. We're not going to come to life internally unless we work on it. And I can tell you firsthand, um, 
I had to work and I continue to work on it. I'm trying to grow and we all have to be because ultimately watch this. It's not about how good I can be so I can say how good I am. It's about I want to be good so that I can be healthier to help reach more people for the message and the hope of Jesus. That's ultimately what this is all about, the rescue mission. And so if we can get healthier, we're better us so that we can point people to the one who's helped us get healthier. Amen. Hey, I'd love to pray with you. Will you, will you join me? Jesus, thank you so much for the great things that you're doing in our lives. Thank you that uh, there's people like Brian who have a heart to help, to help us kind of uh, get healthier internally. And Lord, I thank you that in your word, you were so clear that you said, uh, what good is it a man, if a man or a woman like has everything in the world, but they're, they lost their soul. They're internally a shell. Now, God, help us to be honest, to work hard, to seek help so that we can be the best us internally and engage in your rescue mission. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you're here today and you're watching online and this whole idea of having a healthy soul is so foreign to you because you just are empty inside completely. And we're talking about Jesus and you're like, man, I don't even know this Jesus you speak of or I've heard about him. I don't really know much. What do I do? How do I take that first step? What do I do, Chris? Well, it really, it starts with a stripping down to the basics. And the basics are this, each and every one of us in our nature are broken, hurting, and flawed. The Bible says this, for all have sinned and fallen short of God in his glory. He, here's what this means. God is holy and perfect. He's the sovereign creator. That means he's kind of got things under control. And you and me, people, we're not. We're out of control. And, and again, that scripture says, for all have sinned and fallen short of God and his glory, meaning we have done wrong things. That word sin means wrongdoing or missing the mark. And in our lying, our cheating, our stealing, sleeping around, using things, abusing things, we all do it. In that, it causes a break in relationship with God. Maybe you're watching right now and, and you're like, I feel that, Chris. I feel really far from God. I feel a break in connection with God. Well, that's what sin does. That's what missing the mark does. The Bible is also really clear that that idea of being a sinner and having a broken relationship with God has consequences beyond right now. And here's what it boils down to. You and me are created in God's image. What that means is that we have eternity written on our hearts. We talked today about the soul and the soul is made up of the body, the mind and the will. And you see, those things make us unique in all of creation. We are eternal. That soul is eternal in nature. There is eternity there. Like this body is going to one day go in the ground or get caught up in the air. Amen. But listen, this body is falling apart. I feel it every day. This week I was working out and I got stuck. Why? Because I'm getting closer to 50 and things aren't working like they used to. That's the part of this body. It's, it's sin nature and it causes us to kind of die. But internally, we have this eternity. We, are, we have eternity written on our hearts. And here's the dynamic. The scripture says this, for the wages of sin is death. This is what it means. The consequence of our lying, our cheating, our, thief, our thieving, our, our, our deceiving, our sleeping around, all that. The consequence of that is death. And it's not just ceasing to exist and rotting in the ground. No, we have eternity written on our hearts. You and me are eternal beings. And what that means is if our sin is not forgiven by God and restored in relationship, we actually face separation from God, death, after this life in a literal place called hell. 
My friends, that's, that's a heavy statement and it's a problem. And maybe you're watching right now and you feel the weight of that. Well, I'm here today to tell you that God knows you, he loves you, and he did something about that problem. He brought the great solution to our great problem, and that is his son, Jesus. The Bible says this, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that who would ever believe on him and in him would have everlasting life and forgiveness of sin. Jesus Christ is the solution to our sin problem. That scripture that says, for the wages of sin is death, didn't stop there. It said, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me ask you this. Have you believed in Jesus yet? Have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, to come into your life and to give you hope? Have you asked Jesus to come and restore you that which has been lost? You're watching right now and you're like, Chris, no, I haven't, but I want to. Well, I want to give you the opportunity right here, right now. If you want to say yes to Jesus, will you do me a favor? Maybe there's something stern in your heart. You're sitting on your couch. You're, you're on the treadmill. I don't know what you're doing, but I know this God is stirring you to make a decision. And here's how you do it. Will you text me? Drop what you're doing, whatever you're doing. Take your phone out and text the words, respond now to 94,000. Just text those words, respond now to 94,000. Here's what will happen. You're going to get a link in your text, in your chat. And I want you to click that link. And that is direct connection to us. And we want to help you take this step of hope and faith in Jesus. If you're in the house right now, you're in White River Junction and you want to say yes to Jesus. You want to say yes to hope, yes to forgiveness, and yes to everlasting life. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to ask the house to close their eyes and bow their heads. And if you're watching online, you can join us too. Close your eyes, bow your heads. And, and if you're here right now and you're like, Chris, I want to say yes to Jesus. I want my sins forgiven. I want to begin that true restoration of my soul and have hope for everlasting life. I'm going to count to three. And I want to give you the opportunity right now to quietly raise your hand when I count to three. One, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be rescued. Two, today is the day that you can be rescued. Wherever you are, you can be rescued from the consequence of sin right now. And if that's you, three, will you just quietly raise your hand high enough so that I can see it? Just keep your hand raised. If you have your hand raised, here's what I want you to do. At the end of your aisle, I have a friend I want to connect you with. If you're watching online and you've said yes to Jesus, I want you to text those words, respond now to 94,000. Will you join me in praying? Jesus, thank you for the hope we have in you. And thank you that you bring life and light because you love us. And I pray God that as we come before you now and we sing to you, that you'll hear our hearts you hear our hearts as we sing this song. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, will you stand? You're online. Will you join us in singing? Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath. Could ever breathe, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart. Love 
song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
you would let that be true for us, that you would let us speak that confidently, that you would heal all the parts of us that are broken so we can just say, it's well. You're in control, and it's well with my soul, God. I just, I just pray that for, for everyone who's seeing this and hearing this. I just pray that, that we'll have more of you and that we'll have peace that only you can give. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I just pray that you were encouraged through this experience. I pray that you um, have courage to take that next step, to really do some evaluation. What is that next step to have a healthy soul? Um, I just want to encourage you, don't be alone. Don't do this alone. We have table groups here at Riverbank Church. You can get plugged into one. You can be in community. Reach out to someone. We love you, and we are praying for you. Um, and I hope you have a great week. See you next week.